Welcome back, guys. It's Chef RJ, So Sus, and more. Today is something a little bit different. This video is a little bit different than normal. Um, I've seen this video before. Um, I know you guys probably haven't seen this video before. That's new to my channel, but I've seen this video uh, a few times, been reacted to. Um, I wanted to react to it and give it my opinions about this guy's story. And it kind of makes you realize how, you know, you know, some people don't believe in God or... You know, some people believe it's something that's out there, but I'm going to tell you my opinion on how I feel about this story, and um, this is about this guy, Ross Capione. story, um, I watched the music video, the first time I ever seen, heard about the story, and about what happened to him, and... I'm not going to give it all away, but make sure you smash up the thumbs. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave your comments down below. This is a a 14 long minute video, so we, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to tell you my feelings on this uh, story. So, um, let's get going. And leave, Oh, yeah, leave your comments down below. Also, I'll be leaving this story down in the description down below. Also, I'll be leaving down my Instagram and Twitter. Um, please go follow me over there as well. We're almost at 600 followers over there. Um, so please go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And please share this video. So let's go. All right, everybody, uh, go ahead whenever you're ready. All right, my name is Ross Capicchioni. I'm from Macomb, Michigan. Suburb outside of Detroit. Start with your story. How it happened? Well, it, all, it happened like I was a junior in high school. You know, 17-year-old punk shit. Just doing my thing, skating, hanging out. What I mean is basically there's no... This kid, supposedly, was supposed to be my friend. And I knew this kid for uh, 10 years prior before this day. He asked me, hey, can you give me a ride to my cousin's house, you know, down in the D? All right, yeah, well, like, what part? Like, the west side or the east side? And he's like, the east side. And I was like, nah, man, I don't got no business on the east side, you know? He's like, no, nah, it's cool, man. Like, the east side, that's like seven mile, like... When you get bad vibes like that, sometimes you should go with your feelings. But sometimes pressure from people sometimes gets you to do things that you don't want to do. So, you young teens out there, if someone pressures you to do something that ain't right, go to your parents and... And, and talk to them about, you know, what's going on in the situation and that. And, you know, never get yourself in a situation you can't get out of. Just, it's like a third world country. The police, they won't stop and get out the car. They won't pull you over. If there's gunshots, they'll wait till everything's clear and they'll come pick your body up off the street and that's it. He's like, please, man. And this... Is how really Detroit really is. If you ever been in Detroit, this is how it's really. Oh my goodness! My goodness! This is how it is really is um, over there in Detroit. Man, please. I'm like, no. So, like, a week goes by, you know, I'm still telling him no, like, because I had a feeling, like, down from there. Kept asking me, I'll give you 30 bucks for saw this shit. I'm like, whatever, you know, you're my friend. I'll take him there. I go to school that day, and I get out, 
and everything seems normal. We go to the game, he gives me the money for gas, we drive down there. So I get off and... Battery low. Bad. And it's like, bright now, beautiful day like this. And we're driving and we know where to go and we pull off the street. And you know, there's people outside and there's a guy that's right there. So he's like, pull around back in the back. Like when I turned the corner to go right, like I seen it, it was like auction by doing that and all this shit. But I still, you know, because I, I knew him from I just thought, you know, it's the D, it's, you know, whatever. There's a, like a grass area with my, my vehicle and then houses right there. So it was like, I, I wasn't in the middle of nowhere or anything. And get out. He gets out and it's only a couple seconds around me. My ear, and I'm like, man, that was close. I kind of just glanced down, and my arm's just hanging off. Just hanging off like a zombie. And I'm just looking, and I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, yeah, this is not real. Kind of shake it off and look again, and it's just hanging off. I mean, I'm like, that's, that's crazy. Like, um, I, I feel probably feel the same way. Like, I would, I'd be in disbelief that it actually happened. Like, I, I got shot. You know, like, you be in disbelief on, like, you really got shot and messed up. Kicks in, like, blood, like, flowing, like, like an animal. And then I look, this kid's just holding a shotgun, like, ten feet away from me, just holding it right at me. And I asked him, I said, like, did you see? And he just... <laughs> blew a hole in my chest, like, big. To that, I just dropped to my knees. I lost all my air. I couldn't. Eat. I remember like being on my like, you know, on the knees, and I felt the barrel to my head. I felt this barrel just shaking stuff. At this point, I would have been praying like, cause this this is the last time that you know, I'm gonna be on earth, so I'm gonna start praying and asking God to, hey, please. My head, and so I smacked it away. But it was a shot sprayed, so it still like hit me in the head really good. But it didn't pull my head off like a watermelon. Just this is. So after that, I had a little sight, and I was like, okay, I'm still moving. Like I don't know what's going ahead, but I know I'm alive. And I remember I looked up, and he was just staring, and he took the butt of the gun and like smashed me in the face with it. Took my teeth out. Like I fall back, but I can see at this point, and I don't understand like how I can see because I have so much damage to like my lung. And I felt like these hands pocket digging from my car keys. When I grabbed my keys, like I ended up on my stomach. Now, but then I see my Jeep driving away, just driving away, flying away, and I say, well, either I stay, lay down in this spot and die, or I try to get up. So I try to push myself up, but like my left arm take it right out so gun to chest bigger than a soup bowl and then it all mashed up and I'm trying to push myself to the ground trying and trying and I'm like alright you know what one more I'm going to try it one more time pushed up and then I out of nowhere I felt these arms beneath me pick me up I remember like swinging trying to grab someone and there was no one and I was just and this is where I been mean, like this is where miracles are performed when you're at your last moments on about to die no one's around you it's just you out in the wilderness no one's around you're dying but you feel arms around you this, from my point of view for being a Christian and having Christian faith, God sent him an angel so he could stay alive. Like standing up still, like a like a drunk, like you know, zombie, just like. And I got this like shove, like someone shoved me from behind to go full. I must have got about seven, eight feet. I just fell sound. Cause I remember I hit on like on my stomach. I'm like, all right, well, I went as far as I could. This shit's hurting, like, too much. Like, let me just close my eyes and start breathing. Sure enough, I close my eyes, and all the tears are going away. And then I'd wake up real fast and be like, right? 
I just got 30 seconds ago, how's the pain stopping? And I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, go sleep. That's a good feeling when you're sleeping. So I'll pass back. Got and then I'd be, I'd be di like dying. Wake myself up. I, I own voice third person. Hey, man. Man, you're dying. And then I did that. And then I heard, hey. And I like hearing this guy. And he's like running over to me. And when I fell, there was a, like a probation officer at a stoplight. And he seen me fall out of the woods. Like all bloody broad daylight. And I felt his hand. I'm like, hey, man, you're fine. Don't, don't, don't close your eyes. Come on. The ambulance and they're coming. And I'm like, man, like, I just want to sleep. Leave me alone. But then in my head, I'm like, no, you don't. Because if you fall asleep, you're sleeping forever. And I remember getting on the stretcher, and they're putting me in the stretcher, and just, like, the, the facial expression of the paramedic was a stunned look on his face, but in the same time, I looked great. I looked beautiful, like, fine, and then it just, like, down, and I went to, like, a, like, I was outside and on my skateboard, filming it, like, rolling telephoto filming of the aim, the doors open, everyone's panicking. And I see my legs coming out, and like once it gets to my head, black. I was pronounced dead on there right there. John Doe had nothing on me. They said, you know, Doc, this kid's, you know, gone. Doc said, no. Ah, uh, you know. He was literally dead, gone. DOA at arrival. Let me try. Let me try. God was working through these doctors and God saved him so he was very blessed to see another day like when I was pronounced dead on arrival like throw him in the body bag he's dead the doctor said no like you know I'm gonna try to help him this man doesn't know who I he could have said yeah he's dead all right I'm going back home he said no like I feel something I, I'm gonna try did the heart surgery, gave me 24 hours, you know, to see if I was still breathing on the ventilator. At four hours, I was still alive. They fixed my arm and my head, and about three days later, I remember, like, you know, and it was still all, like, white everywhere, and I'm like, dead, dead. You said the kid, dead. And then, so I still, like, and then it's like, I see curtains, and I got like, an oxygen, and I'm like, Started, and then I swear, bam, perfect, and I'm in a hospital, and I'm, then I'm like tied down to the bed, got the breathing tube in me. I got this thing pumping air in my lungs, so I start freaking out. But there's a nurse there, though, and I didn't even notice her, because I lied down, and I just hear screaming like, he's awake, he's awake. And I see her like running out of the room, and then like run back like three more nurses and the doctor, just this woman just around right the corner flying, throws her clipboard in the air, runs up to me, hi, God, you look beautiful. And in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? What do I, look like? I can't even, what's, what's going on? Like, am I tied down? And then she's like, all right, woman, like on two, she pulled that thing out of my throat, man. I got like, I got to breathe again, like real air, like, <laughs> and, you know, of course I coughed up a of tar and bees, but everyone was just looking at me like, you're alive. Like, you're breathing on your own right now. Like, what's your name? What year is it? What? President. Huh? Is there a... We could contact anyone you know with the phone number. I was like, two... Seven. Out of anything, my name, the year, the only thing I remembered was my father's phone number. For three days, family didn't know. My father was out, like, up in the garage, and he got the phone call from the hospital. Crazy. They didn't know for three days that he was missing. Lord Jesus. Saying, I think we got your son. He's been shot, but he's alive. So, I don't know how you're I don't know how to, you're a father. Like, so. God works miracles. I don't know. It chokes me up because, like, beautiful it's crazy, testimony. But Very sad. But they came down there, and, like, I see my mom come in and. I'm looking at him, I was like, Mom, can't get mad at me right now. She's like, Mad! Five, you're alive! After like the fourth day, they were like, Alright, get up, you know, start walking, let's go. I'm like, Let's go where? He's like, You're going home tomorrow. I'm like, It's been five. He's like, 
dude, you're going home. What do you want to live in a hospital? Or you want to go live again? I'm like, I got a hole in my chest the size of a teacup. He's like, let's give you a tip of advice. You live through this, you're going to be okay. Just go home, live your life. Don't hang out with kids anymore. After five days. Sorry, guys, I could not finish part two. My memory is full. So. I will be making a part two. I will finish part two at another time. But we will finish the story um, of Ross Capione. We will finish it um, at a later time. But I love you guys. God bless you. I just wanted to show you this video because um, this man went... He died. He literally died, but he was God brought him back so he could tell his story about what happened to him. And you know, it's a beautiful story. Um it just make you make you stronger in well well me it would make me stronger in my faith that God can bring you out of you know you know death or life situations but with that being said i love you guys till next time we will be making part two but make sure you smash them thumbs up if you guys want to see part two make sure you smash them thumbs up i will continue that video next time so Make sure you smash them thumbs up. I at least want like 30 thumbs up and I will continue part two. Love you guys. Till next time. Peace.